everyone. In this lesson, we will be talking about various numerical errors that often occur in various numerical methods and techniques. So what are errors? As we already know, numerical methods are not exact solutions. The difference between numerical methods and analytical methods is, the, is that the analytical methods are very much exact. They provide the solution that we actually need. But when the analytical solution becomes very much complex and time consuming, we go for the numerical methods. And we do a trade off between the time of computation and the ease of computation with the accuracy. And hence, numerical solutions do have some errors associated with them. But whenever we apply a numerical method, we need to be assured that the method is applied with full confidence or at least with a confidence that is very much satisfactory. And that means the numerical error should be within range or within the considerable amount. So when we need to use the computational resources in such a way, we need to use it in such a way that the error are minimized and the accuracy is satisfactory. Before diving into the numerical errors, we need to define what significant figure means. Significant figure or significant digit has been developed to formally designate the reliability of a numerical value. For example, in this slide, we are showing some numbers like 0 0.00001845 or 0.0001845 or 0.001845. All three numbers have four significant figures. That means the significant figures denotes the most significant digits which are non-zero. So all of these three numbers have the equal number of significant digits. So significant digits are those numbers that can be used with full confidence. Next, we need to define what does accuracy and precision mean. Often we do compare these two terms and we invariably and unconsciously use these two terms interchangeably. And as a result, there is a confusion. There often occurs some confusion between accuracy and precision. We need to be aware that both accuracy and precision are two different terms and they, and they provide two different informations. Accuracy refers to how closely a computed or measured value agrees with the true value, whereas the precision refers to how closely individual computed or measured values agree with each other. The concept of accuracy and precision can be illustrated graphically more clearly in the following figure. Look at the figure. This is a chart of bullet holes. The bullseye at the center is the true value and the bullet holes are located at other locations. Along the x-axis there is the accuracy term and along the y-axis there is the precision term. Figure A and figure C has lower accuracy whereas figure B and figure D has higher accuracy. In another term, figure A and figure B has lower precision whereas figure C and figure D has higher precision. So what do we mean by these? Take for example figure A. In figure A, the bullet holes are situated at diverse locations. But in figure C, the bullet holes are situated within a specific range. That means the deviation of the bullet hole locations in figure A are greater than the deviation of bullet holes in figure C. And that's why figure A has lower precision, but figure C has higher precision. In this case, the accuracy is not being considered. 
because although the accuracy is lower because both the bullet holes in figure A and figure C are situated at a corner at the left upper left corner and hence the accuracy is very much low they are very much far away from the bone side from the true position and that's why both of them has lower accuracy but figure A has lower precision since all the bullet holes are scattered but figure C has higher precision since all the bullet holes are converged at a specific location. Now take for example figure B and figure D. Look at the bullet holes. Both in figure B and figure D, the bullet holes are situated around the center position. That means in figure B, the standard deviation of the bullet hole locations is higher than the standard deviation of the bullet hole locations in figure D. And hence, the precision in figure B is lower than the precision in figure D. Because in figure D, the bullet holes are more closely situated than in figure B. And that's why figure D is more precise. But both of figure B and figure D has the same accuracy. Because in both figures, the bullet holes are situated around the center position, around the mean true position. So I hope you already now know the difference between precision and accuracy. And although a system might be of lower accuracy, it might be of higher precision. Conversely, a system may be of lower precision, but it might be of higher accuracy. So we all should be aware of the difference between accuracy and precision. Now let's talk about some different definitions of errors that frequently occur in numerical methods. Since numerical methods approximate a solution, the numerical approximation will incorporate some kind of error. Say for example, the numerical approximation, if it is subtracted from the true value, we will get the true error as denoted by the second equation. Also, this true error can be defined in terms of relative error, which is called true fractional relative error. This type of error is defined as the true error divided by the true value, and this is called relative error. And also we can define this relative error in percent notation, which is also denoted as epsilon of t. This percent true relative error is defined as true error divided by true value with a percent notation. But we have to be careful about error definition because the same type of error is not significant for all types of scenarios. For example, say for we want to measure the length of a bridge and we also want to measure the length of a rivet. The true length of the bridge is 10,000 meter, but the true length of a rivet is 10 meter. Say for example, we use some numerical method to find both, the, both of the lengths. For the bridge, we found the value to be 9,999 meter and for the rivet, we found the value to be 9 meter, respectively. So for both cases, numerical error is 1 meter. But this 1 meter is not significant equally for both of the systems. For example, if we want to find out the percentage of error for the bridge, it would be 0.01%. But for the rivet, the same error turns out to be 10%. So look at the difference. For the bridge, the error is 0.01%, but for the rivet, it's 10%. Although for both cases, the numerical error was same, 1 meter. 
So we have to be careful about error definition in various environment. For a specific problem, one type of error can be significant, but for another specific problem, different kind of error could be significant. And that's why whenever we want to use the error definition or we want to calculate the error, we have to be careful about the significance of that error. In the previous slide, we calculated the true error and percent true relative error. But those error can only be determined whenever we know the true value. But practically, whenever we define a problem or solve a, uh, solve a system with numerical methods, we do not know the true value. And that's why we cannot use those definitions of true error or true percent relative error in those cases. Hence, we want to use approximate error. What is approximate error? The approximate true value minus the numerical approximation. That means, although we do not know the true value, but we approximate the true value. And that's why the definition is approximate error. And this approximate error can be defined in percent notation, which is true approximate error divided by true value into 100. Of course, whenever in numerical solution, we go from iteration to iteration, we need to define the relative error to stop the iteration. So how do we stop a numerical method from going on indefinitely? And that's why the approximate relative error is important. For example, if at one iteration you get the current approximation of a true value and you also have the previous approximation of the previous iteration, then we can calculate the approximate relative error. And these approximate relative error can be used as a checkpoint to stop the iterations from going on indefinitely. And that's what we have defined here in this slide. Now we want to know about different types of numerical errors that occur in the practice. For example, the major sources of errors in numerical methods involve human error, round of error, discretization error, numerically stable error, truncation error, formulation error, and data uncertainty. All of these errors may occur simultaneously or some of them may occur in a specific problem. For example, the human errors are mainly the arithmetic errors or the programming errors. These errors can be very hard to detect unless you know what you are doing. And that's why whenever you are modeling a system or you are programming, you have to be careful about those errors. Although these errors are very much human problem, these errors can be checked by placing various checkpoints in our programming codes. Also, we are familiar with the gross errors or blunders. In the early years of computers, erroneous numerical results could sometimes be attributed to malfunctions of the computer itself. Because in the early years of computers, the computer was not enough developed. And as a result, although the humans modeled the mathematical problem properly, the computer malfunctioned itself and as a result the solution was erroneous. Today the source of error is highly unlikely because the computers are more advanced than the previous and primitive ones and most blunders must be attributed to human imperfection. And that's all is. Thank you so much.